make a single change. They're staying true to their roster since they started back in stage number one. And they will ban Nook as they first attack an operator. We'll see if OXG they want to remove something important as well. Yesterday in their matchup against Mirage, OXG banned out Twitch on attack and Valkyrie on defense. And it didn't really have uh, the results that they wanted. It was en route to a 4-7 loss. And Mirage have managed to make their way into the top four. <laughs> what was Kino trying to type there? He said, let's all have a great game and something about a burger. I don't, I don't know if I missed it. He did the thing where you keep typing until all appears on the other line. So it oh. looks like somebody else said something. Okay, but in okay. reality, they did not. Yes. Interesting. Anyway, yes. If you didn't watch the matchup yesterday, Mirage toppled OXG 7-4 on this exact map. If you haven't watched either of these teams in action, you might be shocked to see the scores and the standings on the top of your screen. Xset enters in eighth with a one and two score line. They won their very first matchup on play day number one on Chalet, seven two over Beast Coast, who had marked the shark playing yep. as a sub because Ferda, the actual member of Beast Coast, is unable to play due to not having a visa. But things Attack are not also not so rosy as they seemed, because X had then lost to Parabellum the very next day on border, and then also lost to the Sonics yesterday on Clubhouse. As for OXG, they lost to Parabellum in the very first play day, then they lost in overtime to Space Station on the second play day, and then lost in regulation to Mirage yesterday. A single point for OXG. And as Jacob likes to bring up, no team that has finished 0-3 to start off a season has ever made it to the major. I know that statistic could be quite misleading because there's only been like seven stages of the NAL properly. So it's, it, and the teams have changed an awful lot and yada, yada, yada. But I mean, the point still stands is yeah. that, oh, actually you're in a rough spot. And the likelihood of them making the major is very, very small. And if they lose here, it's not over, but it would seem almost impossible. No, it certainly would. And I mean, it is surprising in that aspect. And OXG, I mean, they had a very great comeback against SSG. They brought it to overtime, but then couldn't quite finish that final round that they needed. Now, early beginnings here on Theme Park, 30 seconds into the round. Verge is doing a great job with the entering right now downstairs in Gong. Jones are coming out, information being gathered. Excel, of course, they are roaming, but look, the map is basically split in half. The left-hand side of the west side of the map is in, you know, exit control, and the, west, and the east side, rather, is OHGs. The only issue with Theme Park is you cannot attack from a singular angle. You need to get split pressure across the map, so OHG are pretty much forced into a challenge here on the roam, and that's why Sledge is going to start doing some verticality here as well to help alleviate some of that pressure above the reinforced wall towards the bomb side. With Nomad on the board from Sweater, you can hold down the flanks and keep Yawk kind of stuck in this position. But Yawk himself has two impact grenades, so it's not that safe after all. Air Jeff gets trapped in the magnet, so it's not going to call any flanks for now. There's a Mew Jammer on the other side of this wall. It's the last remaining nade in the hands of Newers. They'll go down and should be able to open it up. And now the exothermic charge will unfortunately Impact be impacted away. Dream has one remaining in his pocket, but they need to ensure that nobody's over there oh. to take care of it. Look at this lineup from Diaz. I've seen that before. Deep inside of Throne. He can very easily manage that arc. And there goes another one of the exothermic charges. Does it work? Let's watch the perspective of Diaz. Yes, it no does. No way. OXG extremely frustrated with this one. They will have no entry for maintenance. Yeah, and it was OXG who banned out the ace, by the way, and then forcing themselves onto Thermod or Hibana. And that's right now is something they might regret because you get a minute left. And now not only do you not have a single angle to attack from, you can't breach the hatch. You can't breach any of the walls. Things are jammed or electrified, etc. And Spirit is still roaming up above as well. So they got to go for a full frontal attack and just running through a doorway. That's not easy. Well, Spirit still roaming upstairs could prove to be a major headache. There's been no real contest in terms of gunfire. Only Newers is the one who sustained any damage. That's been a slow first round. After that, Exothermic Charge failed to pay off. OXG have figured out that, well, we have to go through another route. What is the next best option? Sweater might get swung upon. Vertical trying to capitalize off of information from a drone. Newers the very first pick. Vertical follows up. Sloppy gunplay. Gomez prevails and could get yet another. Dream is in that position, but Sweater's fragging out for its spirits and Diaz to come back to the bomb site. Diaz behind the throne. Watch it. 
watch the throne. It's Fox A versus Diaz, and Diaz just needs to hide, giving X set round number one based off of the clock. Actually, a surprise in the close round, coming down to a 1v1 as a member of OHG was indeed injured on the ground there. And given how a few things that they had to work with, they really got through the bomb side. They got the trades quite successfully, and well, Armory was successfully defended. The question now is, where do you go secondary bombsite options? Bunks or labs is normally your go-to so far. The lab bombsite speaks more to the roam game and the roam presence. Whereas the bunks bombsite, well, you can extend to the east-hand side, to the right-hand side of your screen if you want to. And with three shields being picked up inside of Exit, I would expect them to make rotation holes from the side in towards the east, put down deployable shields, and extend out throughout the map. Otherwise, you're going to have a very, very small bombsite with very few playable positions and three shields shields to cover such small ground. Of course, Frost being brought on the table as well for any jump-ins. Cafe window right there. Both traps going beneath the window. When you angle them like that, I believe you can see them by just going close the window looking straight down, so I'm not sure how successful those traps will be. But perhaps the one inside of Cafe behind the desk will find more success. Top yellow has been reinforced, but that single wall on top of the bomb side is soft, so I assume a rotation will be made eventually. The arc shield has been put down, so has Spirits. Kinos just got put down a second ago as well, so all three shields have been deployed. It is indeed an extension from XZ. No rotate still. Wait. Not yet. Wait. Oh, there it secondary is. Secondary shotgun for the Frost. Just a little bit late into this daycare slash bunks defense that we now see. Do we ever get clarification on the bank matchup, by the way, as oh. to which of us was correct? Did we? Can you check for me? I will check for you. I'd like to know. You're very curious about that, aren't you? I like being right. Okay. It's a trait I inherited from my mother. So <laughs> okay. She, as a woman, despises being wrong. Might be toxic on my end. Men are left because women are always right. Okay. Yep. Sure. I guess that's how it works. Extending outwards over towards office. That's where you see this exit defense go as they hang on to the bunks and daycare portion of the map. A minute off of the clock and OXG want cash as their primary entry point to then march onwards. That means that Kino could be the first one in the line of defense and he gets swung on by Sweater, gets valuable information. There's a second player from OXG not too far off that could have helped but instead it was Newers who just waited so patiently. Sweaters loses a lot of HP in the process and ultimately flashes himself, but it is enough to shake Kino off of his position as OXG continues to take greater oh. map control. A late reinforcement from X set though, as they now know exactly where OXG's coming from. I love that mid-round reinforcement because now you have fought, you have wasted so much time, you've killed four drones, now you're falling back towards the bombs that reinforce the wall you can have a place jammer on it if Mute was on the table, but that's not going to be the case. So the wall should be opened up momentarily from Dream. But with limited pellets available, it's going to be a scuffed breach, if you will. Not the greatest injury point for the attackers so far. Well, that's the very first pick for OXG as well. Newer's got in on the action. He got the first pick in the previous round, but it was answered back very quickly. Next set on the, on the board. Fox A had suffered some damage earlier on. Kino gets the remainder of it. And now vertical in the midst of gunfire and toxic gas while well, he goes down for the count. Diaz swings wildly, trying to rebuff any advance from OXG as Oxygen are going to have to deal with the clock. Newers goes down to Spirits. The smoke winning that gunfight, but Dream answers back. On to Spirits and sees the arm of Diaz, but cannot capitalize. Still on this breach hole. So close to being able to walk into the bomb site. But with how limited HP Sweater has and what little is left is now dead to Kino, Dream has a mighty task ahead of him and a crossfire that he's not going to be able to survive very much. Softening up Kino, but Xset cannot pull off a proper crossfire. Dream in a 1v2, and he's down for the count. The sidearm from Diaz is good enough, and Xset start off hot with the first two rounds. I really feel like OHC needs something to force these executes better, whether it be the Ossa for the cover or a Ying for an execute or something they can really use to like get in through these breaches and these crossfires. Because right now, they're walking in pretty much raw, if you will, taking gunfights one versus one, and it's where the defenders, they thrive usually. And it's a rough start for them. Of course, Team Park is difficult to attack on, but you just need to come in with a solid plan and an easy way in throughout the map. And right now, it doesn't seem to really have that going for themselves inside of OXG. They might need to change things up here momentarily. And uh, I checked the numbers. I crunched them. 
And um, you might have been right. It, 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 it was a Telloy cycle. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good job, Parker. <laughs> I was right. Yeah, uh, you're I told right. You. See, I, I could have told you that you are wrong and it's lied to you because you didn't. I, I checked the numbers, but no, I'm a nice guy. You were correct. Crunch Good job. the numbers. Crunch Flip the numbers. Them over and send them to me. <laughs> I need them. See, I, I, I know, I I know the reference. That's I all was, that matters. I was correct. These references are solely for links. That's what I do. <laughs> I'm trying to see how many references today I can drop solely for links. <laughs> and I hope he appreciates them, mm. providing he's watching. Because <laughs> if he's not watching, it's going to be very awkward. But for those of you who don't know, Lynx is one of the very capable North American Challenger League casters. And he uh, joined me by my side here on this very desk. And he did. When you were away. And he looked and sounded good doing it too. I was just because he was wearing the Azami jacket. That he was. He was rocking it in style. We filmed a hilarious bit of content. In oh, I saw and that. And the, and the jacket. But unfortunately, it was not allowed to run. It's very <laughs> upsetting because it is exceptionally funny. And dare I say, I think it would have been one of the best content pieces that we made. But I've seen it. And you've seen it. Yep. A couple of us have seen it when it was finished. And it was absolutely hilarious. Either way. Alas. Alas. It was very good. Around three on the way, a minute into the round. Nothing has really occurred yet. Drones, of course, just starting to come out from the cafe side of things. But OHT are taking their time, which I think is smart for them. You don't want to lose members early on and have a harder time throughout this round. But at the same time, looking at their operator lineup, they don't really have that execution that I would like to see from them. The Dook could be right now from Fox is being brought out. That might help you with the roam clear. Maybe if you get a kill, you can hack the cameras. But right now, it seems like we're going to go straight into the side windows. And yeah, vertical, he's just in like that. And OXG leading the way again with these opening picks. They haven't been able to capitalize off of it and get a proper round, but Dream is halfway towards the diffuser. There's another to go. They don't understand that OXG is just inside the bomb site. And with a blistering pace, the diffuser has gone down. Now Boxing X set out. All five players from OXG, all alive. Well, Sweater takes a lot of damage, but he's still upright. Gomez can't capitalize. It's Yaga in a 1v5. They convert it. No, how about a flawless round from Oxygen? Hey. They bounce back. They walk right in. Vertical asserts himself in the middle of the bomb site, gets the diffuser planted as well, and then not a single soul from Xset are able to regain their footing. That's OXG finally on the board. I was worried that OXG would not have the confidence to go for a straight side rush in that scenario because they went out towards Cafe with three members, joined the window, joined the door. Okay, a lot of members of Exit are up here. That's trouble. The phone call came out. They sprinted right back down that staircase towards the side window, flashed the journal of bathroom, flashed the window itself. Vert went in, got that opening, and opened the round for his team. Immediate follow up as well. Plant went down, successful hold, flawless on that. Amory though, this is where things get tricky. Last time Dream brought the Thermite, that did not work out because the impact trick was perfect from Xset. Now he is hovering the Hibana instead. Of course, those Hibana pellets can also be impact trick, but you should be able to get at least a somewhat either crouch hole in throughout the bomb site or at least a peak hole to work with. But Dream actually thinks differently of it. He's gonna go onto Maverick the last final seconds of the attacker repick phase to then soften up the wall instead and guarantee a good entry point for his team. A smart decision here at the last moment because again, those Hibana pellets can get tricked and there are four impact grenades on the side of Exit. Good read from Dream and OXG. Yeah, you gotta credit Vertical for that one. He was the one who was in. In there like swimwear. In there like swimwear. In there like swimwear. <laughs> Just as we saw Bolo do in the previous True. map. You find that there's too many people off site? Okay, cool. Let's get in. Let's do some damage. Come in. And plant. Woo. So, that lab bomb site, we saw so little of it, of course, because of vertical success. And the rest of OXG. It's improper for us to just give credit to one. I do want to talk about these opening picks because OXG have not been able to translate an opening pick to a round success until that previous round. Obviously, it was flawlessly done. Mm -hmm. So the opening pick is not as consequential as all the other four that end up happening. But either way, OXG walk in, they get their opening, and then they get just simply beat Ooh. down in terms of this mid-round. Now, this is where things might get interesting because Xset have just gotten the first opening pick of this round and the first opening pick that they have in this matchup. OXG are now gonna find themselves at a deficit. The big advantage that they had that kept some of these rounds close despite them falling short was the fact that they had a numbers advantage, it's gone. You're right. 
Dream Maker working this wall right now. It's gonna take a little bit of time, of course, but I don't think X is gonna get too aggressive on the challenge. Diaz does have the impact ready to go if he wants to throw it out. Of course, you can do a bit of damage towards the Maverick here. Oh my god, Dream taking a ton of damage, actually. If this second impact ready from Yogg hits the mark in a similar fashion, it does not. That could be the end of Dream, at least for this round. Wall should be soft up soon, but Sledge falling early in the round is going to force Vertical to rotate over, likely, to use his soft breach, and there it is, to open up that wall. A bit of value lost utility-wise, but the wall is open, that's all that matters. That's a grenade, two grenades, in fact, grabbed by the Magnet, Newer's throwables, not accounted for correctly. We still got some flashes that could have potentially opened up opportunities for more explosives on the side of OXG. Was Dream and Sweater hanging on to those flashbangs. Newer still at this door, biding time, but he has to watch the breach towards the back of Throne as well. Xset very adeptly moving away from these lines of sight. But now it's vertical engaging over towards the bathroom. He's gonna have to watch the Maverick nearby. Can he do anything with it? Final 30 seconds. So still on the hunt, oh. but it's a shotgun from Spirits to end vertical and give an even bigger advantage to Xset. That is, I mean, now Dream has to now try and make something work, but it's a hard reach of the team. I mean, this is not an ideal situation. With 15 seconds left, you cannot torch the wall right now, Dream. You need to go towards the bomb side door, otherwise it's just Sweater all alone against three members, but he finds two of them. I mean, he's good enough to make it work, but he can't do more than two. Dream now alone against Xset, and, well, the whole team seemed to be in on that one. Say goodbye. Gomez looked to be credited with the very final kill. And Xset bounces back after suffering a semi-embarrassing loss on that third round. Yeah. And now, HT, I was going to say, is a tactical timeout that we got to talk about some situations here because you want to get at least one more attacking round on the board before the side swap comes in. 4-2, not the end of the world. 3-3, three, three, we can be happy with that, but we got to get there first. So, yeah, it is going to be a tactical timeout from them. And uh, going through the comments right now, I feel like strategically, Dream did a good job, as I mentioned, on picking the right hard breacher for the job, but then the opening kill went on to Foxy entering on that lap window, and he was all alone with no real drone support, no one there to trade him, and then it's the sledge, it's half your grenade value lost as well, so you don't really have any real tools to work the bomb side once that wall gets opened up. Both of Nero's grenades basically got caught by a magnet, so no value was had there either, and it all came down to the trade game, which OXG, they can play the trade game really well. They're doing so round and round and round again, but they need something else to enable them. So, need to I want to see some cheek operators. Sweater is showing the Ying. This is what I want to see. Osa, Ying, something to help the Monty if they want to. Uh, we've seen Vertical play that a couple of times in the past. Something has to change. This could be the one. It's going to be a bunks, bumps and defense again from Xset. They're just going through the bombsite motions. Timeout taken by OXG, by the way. What do you think they are going to try to fix for the team? It's got to be the operators, right? They got to they gotta force it out. They're running the same similar lineup every single round. Not really playing Thatcher, playing soft reach on Vertical and Sophia. And that's fine if you can make it work, but Theme Park is all about the execution and getting in through the bomb side. Ying is going to help you so much more. You can smoke off lines of side, Candela, Flashbangs, etc. And the thing is, because you haven't brought out this operator lineup before, there's no Warden on the defense. Warden is like the only real counter to the Ying in the scenario, and because they're not expecting it, it's not being brought out. Yogg is showing the bandit here for Bunks, which is a big thing to note. It changes the entire dynamics of this bomb site because now we're playing for a passive bomb site bandit trick. All the walls are reinforced. Bandit can go either north and trick the top yellow walls, he can go south down, and he can trick the walls below. C4 comes up because the sound cue is there and Thatcher is off the table. Yogg once again from Exit finds the opening kill onto OXG. Just so I'm correct in this, by the way, we are now seeing the same site rotation come out again as it's this Bunks Daycare bomb site. I don't want you and I getting into any further <laughs> arguments as to where they are actually playing. You're the one who needs a set of eyes now. We are in agreement. Thank you, I appreciate it. Glad that we could come to such position. Vertical being down, the Thatcher is gone. We have seen Thatcher's importance fall greatly with the introduction of those secondary EMPs. And even though there are obvious weaknesses to them, smaller radius, not lasting as long as a traditional EMP, Thatcher is not the menace on attack that he was so often. And he's seldom banned at this point and also seldom used for a lot of these teams. But with this lineup that OXG has, clearing out utility, being able to take out the bandit batteries, being able to deal with any laser gates that you might find, any magnets that could be up as well. 
Does EMP still provide a huge value? Not that they do, and but even more importantly so is that now you're playing four versus five, and Vertical has been doing most of the entry job for XT. Now instead, someone else has got to step up, and it's most likely going to have to be Newers because Sweater is on an execution-based operator. So Newers, it's your time to shine right now, buddy. Otherwise, no one's really going to be able to walk in on this bomb side. Kino having some difficulties getting that laser gate back up, but Xset just absolutely wiping through them. Sweater drops down, and two kills from OXG keep the numbers close, but Xset still have a small advantage. Fox A, not too far off of Sweater. They've got some work to be done. Can't find the targets. Diaz in this old, reliable position gets the final two. Xset claim the first half. Four to one, still one round remaining for OXG to prove that they can hang. Oh, boy. Now things are getting dire. You call a technical timeout. You have a, theoretically, a good idea on what to do. This happens, right? Yawk preps the C4 in his hands early in the round. Just wait to the sound cue of most likely a sledge he was expecting to walk through that, uh, towards that hatch. Pop the C4 at the right time, but it was a Thatcher. So that breaching charge goes down even slower than a sledgehammer swing, which just further increases the odds of the C4 working out in Defender's favor, and that it did. We might go to a rehost on this lab bomb site as there is a drone bug being called out in chat. We'll see today where it is. We'll be back in just a second for you. But yeah, we're going to be repeating that same pattern of Amri Bunk Lab, Amri Bunk Lab. So we're not going to see Office at all from the side of Xset. And honestly, that's not really a big surprise because that is the significantly weaker bomb side, at least in most teams' opinion, both looking at the pick rate and, of course, the win rate on that particular side itself. And I mean, lab worked out so well last time. With the exception is the fact that OG just rushed it and then got the plant down. So <laughs> I guess you say it didn't work out at all. But there are easy things for Exit to fix to then try and play that round again. Well, the teams will recoup and get back in here. Would you like to uh, pay them a compliment as how quickly they're able to get back into the lobby? Well, you say it every time. I, I say it every time, it but every time. but now it's forced. So now it feels now it feels wrong. Mm -hmm. It feels wrong. I also think if you're XG, you might you might. I mean accidentally do it slower to like reset here, <laughs> right? It's like, it's like, ah, you know, keyboard's not plugged in, working, admin help, and then, you know, I, of course, nobody would ever do that. Of course, that'd be, uh, that'd be rough for the viewers, for us, for everybody else. No, we'll be on the way soon. Players, they are always quick about this nowadays. And the benefit of playing from a LAN event like we are right now from Las Vegas where the players are, is that if someone is like slacking, or at least they somebody to, to pee or something, well, you can quite literally go to your teammate's PC, get in the syrup for them, and then that's that, right? There really is no excuse to be late or to not be here. Whereas if you play from home, you know, you can just kind of leave your office desk and go do something else for a moment and then be like, oh, wait, I got a party game to play. You're speaking from experience here. Oh, it, it's been done before. It, of course it has. I mean... We all know that sometimes a take issue comes around. You've had to pee the last four rounds, but you didn't want to like. You can't just call a timeout for for pee. Like that doesn't. That's not a thing, right? Please stop saying pee on broadcast. You're not allowed to say pee on live television. Th that is so false. You just say yeah, you have to go to the bathroom. But you have to go to the restroom. Okay. You have to go to the if you have room. to go to the restroom and the washroom, you can't just call for a timeout. But if a timeout a tech pause just happens, that's a perfect opportunity. That's why you play with a catheter. That's not. That is not a thing. It, it's. You know, I don't know if I can say that actually. No, it's it's a water say bottle. It. Water bottle, tactical water bottle. <laughs> it's one of those. <laughs> you know, you always have to nearby. Easy to use. Boom, boom. Don't gotta stand up. Good to go. That's obscene. Yeah. Your duty calls. Duty calls. Either way, last bit of touch-ups being done to this lobby. Oxg, we thought coming into this matchup would be able to bounce back against Xed. They have not had the results which they want, and certainly we know that they are capable of before. I understand that there are certain members of Oxygen who might be very upset with the insistence that we have and my colleagues have mm -hmm. about talking about their roster move. But prior to dropping Laxing, this was a team that would consistently finish domestically in the top four and usually would be good enough to finish in the top eight, if not higher, okay. of international events. There is no doubting Sweater's capabilities as a player. He is a very highly touted individual who, prior to turning 18, was talked about so frequently in regards to getting picked up. And there he is, at least a sliver of him. <laughs> a part of him, yeah. But clearly, dropping Laxing has had some profound ripple effects on this team because they have just looked 
so beside themselves in comparison to where they were three months ago. I do agree. And again, some teams, like let's say, let's say when uh, OXG plays against like Sonics, for example, you can always argue that, well, Sonics, they have a new roster, they got new players, it's a different, you know, different circumstance, different meta game, etc. But now we see OXG play against teams like Exit, who haven't changed at all from last stage, and it's like they're the same kind of problems from the setup of OXG. And I think, you know, Super in the desk they spoke about how exactly. think a change has happened, and New Rose is no longer that kind of you know, take over kind of level player right now without the finger situation. At least he isn't right now, regardless of if it's finger or not. So we can point in many directions to what we might think the issues are, but running it down to like the core concepts here, it simply comes down to OHD not really executing correctly, right? As first on a theme park, getting impact tricked on both exothermic charges, slight oversight, OHD themselves banned the ace. Um, already has been flipped, I believe, between the two teams because I, yeah, OHD was on to ban the ace uh, back in the day. And then they put the Thermite, they got punished. Next round, they're like, oh, maybe Hibana. Okay, last second, they changed the Maverick. Good read, OXG, but it takes them a full round loss to really make that conclusion. They didn't seem to be overly prepared for the issues that might occur with that ace ban that they put out. They are back on Thermite now, but it's a different bomb side. It's a lap down stairs. Last time they rushed it, throughout the side went bathroom window. It was a successful flawless round and plant and intricate. So everything went their favor. See if they can do it again. Gomez aggressively on this bandit might go for a peek here or jump out on the window and might just look for a one for one trade. Well, here's one on repel. He might lose his window of opportunity if the drone comes in. Patiently waiting. It's almost like he's asking for permission oh. and there's the jump out to take out Newers and right back in he goes. Vertical was on repel next to him, but was on drone at the same time. Gomez will ignore the EE1D and continue to run. His position given away as he hightails it towards the bathroom, but ultimately the damage is done. Yep, and uh, the fact that he gets out live, not getting traded back, that's gonna be a telltale because that right there was like all five members were actually on the same side of the map and no one could respond back. Not really covering the crosses. The drone also missed him, went towards that bathroom area instead. Only one drone was really used there. The feet of Bandit Gomez gets spotted out, but he's gonna run away and survive. Now the exothermic charge can go out instead. Putting on the far left of the wall, he's gonna break both the side wall itself, or not the side wall, the wall towards the bunk beds itself, and of course the prep room next to it. So you get this kind of funky double breach situation going on that you can utilize with the Fermite because the explosive radius is a little bit bigger than other gadgets. Second one to get open up is the, of course going to be top yellow. So we're trying to clear out the roamers here from X set. Yogg is last man roaming, I believe, on the top arcade stairs. But even he is going to fall back as well. So we're playing down the clock right now for X set. Oh, see, well, they got to start out making that verticality happen. But the thing is, Nurus died earlier in the round. So the only soft breach they have is Verticals, Sophia, Lifeline charges. And that's not going to cover enough ground for verticality reasons to the bomb side to grant them much vision. Exit are still spread out well off the bomb site too, and there's a Nitro Cell that could have easily taken out the Maverick, but is pulled way too late by Yaga. Either way, Fox A can get away with his life still intact. Over towards Arcade Stairs and assessing what might be below him. OXG have a good foothold on that second floor, but it's not quite so easy. They've got 30 seconds to align the remaining four players on their team towards the bomb site and do some serious work. Gomez is the first target for them to equalize back into a 4v4, but they haven't been able to get the remainder of him. After doing some serious damage, he persists. And that's 10 seconds now, it's been burned. But Yaga's down for the count, finished off by Fox, eh? The Goyo canister's exploded, that'll buy them more time. Diaz fires back, it's on a new, it's on a Fox, eh? Dream is down as well, they both join Newers in the afterlife. Sweater and Vertical in a 2v4, make that just Sweater, but Spirits with the, both the primary and the sidearm puts the punctuation mark on the end of this first half. X set storming through OXG, 5-1. Yep, it's looking almost a little bit too easy in some of these rounds, I have to say. But now we are going to get that side swap, which hopefully is going to bring some life back to OXG because defense is usually the comfortable position for most teams on this map of theme park. And you can get aggressive if you want to, you can play passive if you want to. And I think Xset did a good job of using both of those different kind of avenues because on the first bunk defense, that Exit did, they were playing this really aggressive triple deployable shield extended strat. 
Second time, three rounds later on Bongs, the Rebellion is super passive. Five people on the bomb side, bandit trick and strat. They got that C4 open and kill. That really made the round difficult for OXG. Now, OXG on their defensive half have to show us those both aspects as well because you do have to play that dance between playing really aggressive, shutting down in trees, and then playing really passive, understanding that Armory Bombsite, for example, is really easy to hold if you enable the crossfires. Xset on the very opening round is showing us both the Doka AP and the Ying, and the hard reach of choice is going to be Hibana. So again, they have options available. Diaz is also bringing secondary hard breach utility in the can opener in case you need a second set of breaches. This means that either if Hibana or uh, Ying dies, you got a backup piece and you can get multiple walls and or the hatch if you get full map control. OXG, of course, they're matching a roam, the Vigil, the Melusi, and the Alibi. Both teams favoring this jump out window next to Cash at the top of Dragon Stairs. Fox A playing off of it, window prepped and ready. Does it give a visual indicator, though, to his opponents? He's lost the protection of the hatch inside of security. Don't know exactly what he wants to do with it. A Twitch drone will take out the default cam that was giving him some cover down below in Dragon. So Fox A is really on an island here. He gets droned out, has to watch the window, has to watch the hatch. Maybe not on an island as much as we thought because he's not the sole survivor, Neuer's, is not too far away, playing just by cash and bathroom. First logic bomb goes off, maybe to deny some attempts at retreating, and now a window opened up, so Yaga can repel on in. Both players from OXG that were in the proximity of these attackers, well, they fight back. Neuer's getting the very first pick on the Spirits. I'll start things off with a minute 40 still on the clock. Exit taking all the time they think that they need for this execute to come through on, to on top of the roamers, but right now it's kind of slipping away because OXG have a good read on the situation. They're falling back room by room, drone after drone, and look at this, Gomez are chasing ghosts. He's right behind them, but you know far enough away to the point where he can't quite catch them, and now OXG doing a good job with that. Again, early aggression, getting advantage, understanding their position on the, in the map, now falling back to set up that crossfire. Sweater is still on the Roman Vigil. That makes sense. The gadget will shroud him from drones and information. He can stay alive for a bit longer, and with only a minute to go, Sweater's position will add a lot of pressure on towards Exit when they go for that execute. Yeah, it seems like this is an excellent roam from OXG up to this point. Obviously, things can still go awry and fall apart, but... It's been pretty much picture perfect for them. That's clock management from Xset that is quite lacking. Got to get a couple picks early on, and Xset are on the hunt at the moment. Oh, Sweater could have maybe gotten one, but he fires away, losing a lot of that coverage from above. It's Gomez in hot pursuit. Sweater still just swinging through bathroom and can capitalize on Nikino. Diffuser's down. Can Sweater do more with it? We know how good of a shot he is, and he proves it right now with two quick picks. A third, maybe. Gomez in tow, but Gomez wins that duel all the while. The clock working against Xset. They find themselves in quite a big hole. Gomez and Yaga against four players from OXG. Two and a half minutes, just a little bit more than that, used, and all they found is a single kill. OXG in one of the most defender-sided bomb sites that we've seen in this game. And it's going to be real tough for Xset to make anything work. Yaga, he can't do anything with the clock. That's it for that round. OXG takes their very first defense. Much, much, much better coordination there. Like once they have the, you know, their freedom, I guess, to roam around the map, they do a good job at that. It is, of course, as you mentioned, Parker, a difficult task to roam clear in theme park armory. It is one of the most defender sided bomb sites in all maps throughout the game. But the thing is, once you win that bomb site, it's gonna be locked to the following two rounds. So now you gotta find success elsewhere as well. Bunk daycare is second okay, choice for both teams so far. Early start, of course, the attackers, they can still re-peek around their operators, but Spirit showing the Ossan, Diaz showing the Flores. There's a clear indication that Exit has a good plan for every single attack they're going through as they're hovering these operators immediately rather than changing their minds throughout the prep phase. Of course, it can still change. OXG, they're opting for what looks to be a passive approach, but they are actually making that rotation right now towards the China area of the map between bunks. So it could be in a similar fashion to what Exit did, where you start early with the extension, you put down the shield, and if you're able to, you can spare one reinforcement and reinforce this bomb set wall mid-round to then enable the bandit tricking after that fact. Other option that you have, Bandit can pre-place his bandit charges if you want to, and then play more loose on the roam as a free gun in C4, and play on that aggressive side instead. 
have to see which one Sweater opts for. Right now he's looking around the map, looking for drones, looking for information. Kino, Spirit, Yogg, and Gomez, all four members here are going to be on the cafe side, or oh, sorry, the uh, server bulk side of things, with one member on the cafe side, I presume. C4. Opens Misses. the hatch. So nicely for them, by the way, to do that. An excellent hand up. Either who. Both teams doing the same thing, kind of. This is a very similar style of defense. These teams love playing top of Dragon Stairs. Every single team we've seen in North America play Theme Park will stick somebody in the spot that Fox A is in. Maybe extend outwards to Cash as OXG has done. Newer's shoulder to shoulder with Fox A and then after about a minute is done, they decide to sound the alarm bells and retreat. I am very interested to see how this also is gonna play for X sets because already we are seeing Spirit start to take up ground quite aggressively. And he knows that there's two players from OXG that could potentially do battle with him. There are no explosives to take care of the shield whatsoever, so no impacts, no nitro cell. Spirits is gonna get a lot of value out of this gadget. Yeah, of course, he could get shut down if he's playing too far alone, too far pushed up, and I mean, he takes a bit of damage, but he stays alive for now. Member behind him throws out a grenade, so crossfire is there to be held. Osa getting so much information, but he can't just push through this doorway. He's not a one single HP. Oh, down goes Sweater to Yaga. I was gonna say, the Osa is the one who shouldn't be in the first gunfight. It should be somebody supporting. Spirits exists on a single point of HP. That's it. Another nade goes in, but it's missed its target. Fox A should be able to get out of the precarious position he finds himself in, but maybe the call's been made fight to the death. Maybe, maybe not. All the why, by the way, Newers is not too far off. A smoke grenade gets tossed out to cut off line of sight. Now it's Spirits to oh jump up into the engagement. Fox A somehow gets away from it. This is a good retreat from OXG, but they haven't completely given up all the ground because Newers is still inside a vault and he makes Gomez pay. Spirits is still on such low HP, but the retreat from Newers is not successful. Kino manages to outduel him and then another follow up from Spirits. X set in excellent position to move themselves to match point. That they are right now, but with Spirits being one HP, I mean, he could just tap this wall by the bandit battery, but no, it's smoking, it comes out instead. Does not kill him, but Dream does instead with the SMG 11. I think he knew that he was gonna go down there, so might as well take the engagement, put the shield away. X set still with the upper hand, but the clock is the bigger issue at the moment. That's what we've seen from both of these teams, is clock management has not been ideal, and a lot of credit goes to those defenders. Yaga swatted away, but it's a trade. All oh. trades benefit X set to this point. Can Dream clutch out? He he sees one on the Diaz. Kino was on the diffuser, but he has to take the engagement instead. And oh. he wins it against Stream. Unbelievable stuff from Kino. And Xset moves to match point. With the pistol as well, sprinting in towards the hallway with no real information to work off. I was thinking that's not a situation that's going to go well against the SMG 11 Master of Dream. But somehow, Kino, he wins the gunfight. Dream, a little bit shook there in that gunfight. I think I saw a bit of a shake towards the ceiling. Maybe we get a replay of that either way. Nice shot from Spirits as well to open up that round and entry. Good follow up across the board. Dream had a huge round there, but with the SMG 11, you're limited on ammunition, and that sometimes can be your downfall. We don't get a replay of the shake, but I swear it was there. <laughs> Capcom trap, frost trap to follow up here on the lap bomb side. Rotations are being mirrored from these teams. Armory, bunk, lap. Well, Armory, bunk, and lap as well. It was a really good beginning of a round for OXG. But then it kind of fell apart. Newer's hiding in vault was a great addition as well to kind of play that Joker card throughout the midst of it, creating chaos. But during the vault rotation back towards safety on the bomb side, he got shut down mid animation. Walls were not reinforced mid round. There were two spare reinforcements available to OXG, but they weren't comfortable reinforcing them, thinking that they might get shut down if they try. So the openings were there for exit instead. A spawn peak here from Newers, a classic one at that actually. This is something that he does very commonly both in ranked and of course in pro play if you've watched OXG play this map before. He's aiming at the default cam, I guess to get an idea of either the drone being tossed out or just if it got shot or not. But there was a drone flying across his screen, he thinks better of it, doesn't go for the run out. Gomez has the info and covers the run out in case it would happen. <sighs> We put a lot of faith in Oxygen bouncing back, but it seems like their dreams of the Major could be dead within the next two minutes and 20 seconds. And again, not statistically, they would still be in the running in terms of points, but based on the way that they've been playing and not even pushing to overtime here, giving up all three points to Exet. Mm. 
you're you're in a really really rough spot. OXG have just simply not been living up to that name, and it is I'm sure for their fans is quite frustrating. There's issues that need to be resolved whenever a roster change comes in, and every single team that's had a roster change will tell you that there's usually that period where you have to adjust. I don't know what adjustments OXG needs to make. I don't know what adjustments they've made. I don't play on the team, but clearly they're not performing up to their own standards. X set all the while seem to have found their footing. Again, this is a match between two perennial top four teams, and yet it wouldn't seem like it based on the standings. No, not as close as you thought it was going to be, at least. And now X set doing a good job with this roam clear. Only found one kill. Well, they find a second one as well. Wall got opened up earlier on. Candela went out with a smoke grenade as well to enable the entry point towards this upstairs area of Bunk's bedroom. Lures, he's looking to get aggressive in this 3v5, supporting Foxy on the roam bottom arcade. They got that bulletproof camera, they got information, but Foxy, he has to go huge in this position. Well. This is just X set, just oh, absolutely right. killing OXG. And Fox A in a very inventive spot. Suddenly he and Dream have kept this close. Fox can follow up even more. He can't outduel Yaga. It's a team effort. And Spirits flicks on to both of them to give X set the win. Three huge points and a very quick match as they rep the set in style. 7 2 for X set. OXG. Well, another disappointing performance. Yep, that means they're now going to be on zero and four to start off stage three. Exit yesterday, they played Sonics on Clubhouse and they actually lost two seven themselves. But then today, they turned things around and they showed up in big fashion. Of course, they had the benefit of starting on the defensive side, but I will say even on their theme park attacks, they looked more confident than that of OHD. Their orbital lineup, choices I was a big fan of, whether it's the Flores, the Ying, the Osa, they had these clear indicators of what operators they needed to work their way through the map, whereas 